Hi, welcome and welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Busted in the kitchen, trying to get dinner ready for the family because this is how it is. This is real life, mom life, family life, folks gotta eat. And for dinner tonight, we are going to have vegan chili. Well, my folks are. They're having vegan chili and I've got some rice set aside to go with that. And I had already made a mixed green salad, including some kale, kind of the last of the Victorian kale from my garden and some other veggies. And then we've got a couple different dressings to pick from that were freshly made. One's a tahini dressing and the other is like a cashew ranch that my husband made to go with some buffalo cauliflower wings that they had a couple days ago. And I've got some biscuits uh, homemade in the oven. I wanted to talk to you today about the benign narcissist. And Dr. Romani actually did a beautiful job of breaking down the benign narcissist in her book, Don't You Know Who I Am? Dr. Romani describes the benign narcissist as someone who has kind of a milder form of narcissism and they tend to be validation seeking like all narcissists are, and they're very superficial. And in addition, she talks about characteristics like them being extroverted and very attention seeking, very insecure. They can be very jealous or envious. And there are some other things as well. But I thought that it would be good to talk about this type of narcissist. I know that at the end of the day, you wanna avoid narcissists at all costs and you may or may not want to get into the particulars of you know different categories of narcissist or what have you but I am a firm believer that the more you know the more you grow <laughs> and not only that but with narcissists the more you know the faster you go <laughs> and you can get out of dodge you can get away from them get away step back from the situation remove yourself and move on with your life and get what you need to get done. In my experience, the benign narcissist tends to be very outgoing and can come across as being very personable. And a lot of times they may even be the first person to introduce themselves to you. And just like any other narcissist, the benign narcissist is looking for people to attach them to themselves to. And so they may be the first person to meet you on the job. You may be the new person on the job, or you may be new in town, or the new person on the block in, in the neighborhood, if it's a na neighborhood situation, or in the context of a friend group. You may be the new person uh, that's kind of come into the mix. The benign narcissist may be the person who reaches out to you first and kind of pulls you in and they can come across as definitely very extroverted. They are very lively, very bubbly, very uh, lots of personality, right? Uh, on the surface and can come across as just very upbeat and very energetic. It's like they've got so much energy, they don't know what to do with it. And for a lot of people, that can be a draw. They can be the life of the party. They are the type of person who always wants to be seen in the right situations with the right people. They definitely wanna attach themselves and align themselves with the right people at all times and at all costs. Uh, they tend to be very uh, kind of in awe or, or enamored by other people who have attributes or have characteristics, have talents, skills, uh, maybe even possessions that they don't have or that they want to have. And so they are going to try to uh, align themselves with or attach themselves to those types of people so that they can learn, so that they can maybe even obtain the things that they feel like they lack. And one of the key things that Dr. Romani mentions in her book and has talked about actually just in uh, videos that is key with the benign narcissist is that this is not necessarily someone who comes from a broken home 
or who is down and out or who really is even a con artist or a scammer. They may be, have very fluid skills in terms of being able to interact with and, and hobnob and socialize with people at a higher level. And people who live normal or maybe even affluent lives. However, the thing with the benign narcissist, as Dr. Romani describes it, is that a lot of times this type of narcissist comes from privilege and are spoiled and entitled in some way, shape or form. So they are used to being fawned over. They're used to getting a lot of attention. They're used to maybe even getting a lot of material things. Maybe they're an only child. Maybe they're the youngest of children. However it is, or whatever their background may be, they're accustomed to being the center of attention in some capacity. And so their expectation, a lot of times in social situations, whether it's your neighborhood, whether it's a friend group, whether it's on the job, in whatever social settings, is for everybody to focus on them, all eyes on them. And so they will tend to do, say, and act in ways that draws that attention. And the benign narcissist, like a lot of other narcissists, doesn't really have an identity. They are looking and studying other people constantly. They're watching, they're observing. What are you doing? They may, they may think to themselves, from a distance, they may not tell you this, but they may think to themselves, man, how does she do it? How does he do that? Gosh, she's so such and such, she's so smart, or she's so, her makeup is perfect, or she's so talented, or he's so successful, or he always has the best clothes or drives the best car. And so they're gonna want to get close to try to figure out, or study to try to figure out, how can I get this? because again, they're very jealous and even envious, like they want what you have, they want to be in your position. One moment. So the benign narcissist is going to want to get close to you and interact with you and maybe even try to uh, not literally corner you, but maybe corner you to try to find out kind of what it is, like what's in your secret sauce type thing, so that they can apply that to their own lives and their own situation and kind of improve on whatever area it is of their life that they feel like they're lacking. And I will tell you, say for example, in the case of uh, say a female benign narcissist, they're gonna choose pretty friends or friends that they feel like are really beautiful and they're going to try to surround themselves with people who are attractive, who have money, who have great taste, great style. And they're going to, uh, they're going to try to get all kinds of tips, tricks, uh, tactics and things from those types of people in order to improve their life. And Speaking of life, a lot of times the benign narcissist is very empty inside. They're very insecure. They're very jealous, envious. They don't really have an identity of their own. And so you may see this person try different things, experiment with different types of hairstyles or clothing or whatever, because they're constantly grabbing a little bit of this, a little bit of that from other people to try to kind of piece together an identity for themselves. And they are, you know, they're oftentimes known as being fun and exciting and, you know, perky and all this other stuff. But here's the deal. Inside, they're miserable. You've heard that narcissists are miserable on the inside. The benign narcissist is no exception even though it, it may be considered a milder form of narcissism, the misery is still real. And the truth is, is that they, a lot of times, they have a lot of self-hatred, they have a lot of self-loathing, and they feel very empty inside. And that's why they try to fill themselves up with you know, social activities. They have to be at all the things, they have to do all the things, be at all the parties, they have to go to all of the events, they have to uh, go to, whatever, they, they need to be around people. 
Benign narcissists often feel com more comfortable in groups. They very rarely will want to be by themselves. They don't feel comfortable. They don't feel confident and secure enough to be by themselves. And not only that, when you talk about the context of, say, for example, a, fr a friend group or something like that, the benign narcissist is going to want to do group activities. They rarely like to be by themselves or they do not like to be by people one-on-one -on -one unless they feel like it's someone who buys into their facade, this false image of happiness, of you know everything's great and my life's awesome. Either, either the people that they get with one-on-one -on -one have to buy into the facade that they're happy and that their life is great, or it has to be somebody younger than they are that they can maybe control or manipulate and get to do what they want and you know that they can have you know come be with them at their beck and call or to maybe uh, act as a flying monkey in social settings or someone who they can just maybe boss around <laughs> to be honest they are not going to get with someone who sees through them or who seems more stable, confident, secure in themselves. The other thing that tends to happen is they tend to latch on to people who are not informed and educated about narcissism and narcissistic abuse or the people that they're able to successfully latch on to and continue to draw supply from are people who are codependent and, and heavily so to the point where they can't see it. Maybe the narcissist has figured out how to feed the ego and meet the needs of the people who hang around them or who keep them around or keep them as friends or keep company with them. And that can be kind of tricky, especially when you're in a work situation or when you're in a friend group environment or if it's say neighbors and that type of situation because a lot of times what will happen is people, people may see the toxic behavior and see the cattiness, see the jealousy, the insecurity, see the, the backbiting that takes place or the bossiness or just the, the erratic nature of the behavior. Like some days they're really up and then the next days they're pulling somebody aside that maybe is someone who doesn't realize what they're dealing with or who maybe is easily manipulated or swayed or maybe they're just their temperament is more kind of to where they're too afraid to like speak up and so the narcissist one day they'll be upbeat and they'll be kind of large and in charge and then the next day they'll be kind of crying on the shoulder or just bending the ear and draining someone who doesn't know who and what they're dealing with and so that's something that can happen. If you're not falling in line with what the benign narcissist wants everybody to be doing and you're not someone that the narcissist can control or manipulate easily, they're going to punish you. They're not going to include you in things. They're going to, they're gonna leave you out. And what they'll do is they'll tell everybody else in the group that you couldn't make it or that you they tried to reach out to you but they weren't able to get a hold of you or they didn't have your number or they thought they included you in the text message or whatever the case is. They're gonna come up with some lie or some story to make it seem like they're the good person, right? <laughs> they're, they're the good person and that there was some you know miscommunication and oh you know i don't know what happened i i tried to reach out or i sent the the message or oh i i thought i invited them or oh i told so and so or they'll get someone else to invite you and if that person forgets then you're just kind of out of luck or you know if that they'll get somebody else to do it because they don't want to deal with you and that's an indicator of their jealousy envy their deep-rooted insecurity. One by one, people just kind of start to slowly back away because as time goes on, because the benign narcissist can sustain like within the context of a group, especially if there are enough enablers in the group, the benign narcissist can sustain their, their maintain their status in a group for a while. It can be years, but as the years go on and everybody kind of grows, matures, and maybe even elevates, <clears throat> excuse me, 
and everybody even elevates in their lives, suddenly it becomes apparent that the benign narcissist is stuck and they're not evolving. They're just not. And maybe they were able to get some tips, pointers, and maybe even get some help maybe getting their foot in the door into some opportunities or some arenas where they they could maybe do a little something that they've always wanted to do or, or, or get a little boost that way and feel better about themselves, but they can't sustain it. And because they're too lazy to dig deep and do the work of themselves to figure out who they are and what they want, and also just even go get it, <laughs> then it, it becomes apparent over time that the narcissist is just stuck. They're not able to grow. They're not able to evolve. They're, Im they're still immature. They're still doing the same old, same old. And they may become more reclusive over time. They may start to kind of hide out. They may start to withdraw in general and because you know everybody's kind of gone away. Everybody's moved on to get on with the next phase of their lives. And maybe where the, the group and the situation where that they were in where the benign narcissist was at the center of just doesn't really fit anymore it's they've kind of moved on from that they've evolved from that their life has has evolved in such a way that it just isn't cute and it, or it's not fun anymore they've got other things to deal with and certainly with everything that we've been through over the last couple years that's even more so the case you know people have like adulting to do they've got like real big adult things to do and take care of and plans to make and figuring out how to kind of navigate this next phase and and to navigate the things that are changing and evolving in society as a result of the pandemic and other things. So those are some things that you'll see when it comes to the benign narcissist. You are going to have to decide within the context of say a non-romantic relationship the the degree to which you're going to deal with this person. You know, how close are you going to allow yourself to get to this person? If something comes up, an opportunity, a social event, are you going to go? Are they going to be there? Do you want to be there? Can you be there and do what you need to do socially with the other folks that you maybe are friendly with or, or you know, acquainted with and then call it a night? It's milder. It's not as intense as say a malignant narcissist, but at the same time, it's hurtful. And I think that with the benign narcissist, it can be more hurtful from say an, an ego standpoint, certainly, but more emotionally, like just, just kind of more mean girl type stuff, just as an example. And that type of behavior, catty, mean girl, mean-spirited, jealous, envious, those kinds of things. They're not necessarily conning and scamming you. They're not necessarily beating you, but it's it's more the emotional and the psychological, the, the mind games, the manipulation, the excluding you to make you feel like you're the odd guy out. And in social settings, that's where that can play out and it can it can mess with you. Uh, if you don't know who and what you're dealing with. But once you figure it out, oh, oh, it's like the sky opens up. You're like, oh, okay, that's what that was all about. All right, now I get it. And then you can navigate accordingly. But again, when you're trying to navigate these types of relationships, say with the benign narcissist, you're going to have to look at what the context is. Is it a work situation? Is it a friend group? Is it in your neighborhood? how much or how little can you get away with dealing with this person? And you might want to consider the following. You might want to consider if going no contact. And if you decide not to go no contact, you might want to consider low contact or like an, an occasional uh, encounter, like say at an event, whether it's like a work event or a social event or a neighborhood event, you want to consider that because Obviously, this person isn't going to like, you know, give you a beat down in public, but they may lash out at you verbally in front of other people and maybe embarrass you or just knock you down a peg that way or exclude you from something to where you feel some kind of way. And those are some things you'll want to keep in mind. 
can you navigate a social situation where maybe this person is present without having to be all up in their mix and have to be on the receiving end of their behavior or get hooked into their drama, gossip, uh, be on the receiving end of jealousy, envy, uh, just some harsh words, that kind of stuff. Them maybe trying to be catty or one-up you, even if it's more subtle. The other thing you wanna keep in mind is that the benign narcissist is not your ride or die. They may even claim just to hook you in or as kind of a love bombing tactic, they might refer to you as their bestie or you know, one of their, one of their girls or whatever the case is, but really, at the end of the day, the benign narcissist, even though they're, they may have a milder form of narcissism, they're out for self and they are not your ride or die. When you are really going through it, they are not going to be there for you. They are selfish, lazy, entitled, and spoiled. And they may even go so far as to resent the fact that you're in a, a position where you need something and maybe other people are rallying to support you and they'll resent that they'll resent the fact that you're getting attention and they will withhold their attention and their uh, I'm talking about getting in the trenches type stuff like serving you or being there for you in that way like being on the front lines they're gonna withhold that because they have that much of a need to be the center of attention they're that selfish and insecure when you're dealing with a benign narcissist you're gonna want to watch your back and here's why one is because they are very jealous and envious of you and they're very insecure and they have a lot brewing underneath the surface as well. They may not be as outwardly obvious as someone who, you know, attacks you or who just totally scams you or, or cons you, but they have their own stuff brewing beneath the surface and there's, it's still poisonous, it's still toxic. And you may find yourself on the receiving end of that if you assume that this person has your back. They don't. And you need to also be aware of the fact that people who are enabling this person in their toxic behavior, and it may be just because some people don't have the emotional temperament or have the, the inclination or the desire or the courage to uh, call out the narcissistic behavior. Uh, even with a benign narcissist, they just don't have it in them to call it out. They consider even doing that much to be messy. It's too much drama, it's too much, it's too overwhelming, or they just don't wanna get involved. Or if the context of the group meets their needs in a certain way, they're not gonna to wanna to upset the apple cart because then the group is going to dissipate and then whatever needs they're getting met from the group are gonna go unmet. So the enablers are not gonna have your back either. And whether they may see a different side of the narcissist than you do, because remember, the narcissist is not going to let you see what's really going on. And similarly, the benign narcissist is not gonna let you see what's really going on. They're not gonna wanna let you see them at their weak point. They're gonna only present a strong front or a pretty facade or uh, whatever it is. It's gonna be a positive uh, facing. But they'll let somebody see a little bit of what's going on. So there may be some people that have gotten just enough of a taste to where they're like, oh, I just feel sorry for that person or, oh, I, I feel sorry for them. And yeah, or they may rationalize, say, the conflict that exists or just that between you and the benign narcissist as being a personality difference. And hey, truer words have never been spoken because that's a darn fact. There is a personality difference between you and the benign narcissist, right? you just may not know the depths of it, okay? But the enablers are not gonna have your back either, so you really have to be careful. You need to be watching the group, too, because the benign narcissist will be at the nucleus, and then enablers will be around them. And you may see different people get booted from the group, 
or kind of excluded from the group or group activities because they're not playing into the role that the narcissist needs for them to play in order to keep everything propped up to where the narcissist is on top and they're the, you know, the king of the castle or the queen bee and they can't have that. They have to be at the center. And if they feel threatened by you in any way, then they're gonna either exclude you or they're going to boot you out. So those are just some things to be aware of. It all comes crashing down eventually. I've seen it happen in all, all of those different groups, coworkers, friend groups, neighbors. It all falls apart, trust and believe. So your best bet is to remove yourself as soon as you understand who and what you're dealing with is to remove yourself and you can watch from a distance while it all falls apart. Always seek to cultivate your own relationships with people and never rely on someone else to facilitate your relationships with other people because the narcissist, regardless of the degree of narcissism, they're gonna be more than happy to, it's a form of control, so they're gonna be more than happy to try to facilitate relationships and to be in the middle and to kind of facilitate communication or to facilitate the proximity of, of contact or, or the degree of closeness. So the more that you focus on cultivating your own relationships with people, the better. Have you dealt with a benign narcissist? How did you handle that situation? How did you deal with that person? Comment below, I would love to hear. And dinner is ready and my boys are home, so I'm going to get everything served up so that uh, we can have dinner together as a family. I'm trying to work on that in 2022. <laughs> Everybody's running around in different places and definitely wanna to try to do more dinners together uh, as much as possible, especially before we get into the thick of sports seasons. <laughs> anyway, benign narcissists at the end of the day are still narcissists and they display a lot of the same characteristics and it may be to a lesser degree, but it can still be damaging to your mind, body, and spirit. You owe it to yourself to identify who and what you're dealing with and to navigate accordingly and to do what you need to do to protect your health and well-being. You're not alone and you're not crazy. Know who you're dealing with, know who you are. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.